market dried up in bam, 24 hours. And I am not exaggerating. Well, those payments have been turned into a Wall Street product. It's happening. The debt bubble has popped. Get protected, get out of the system while you can. We've got to talk about the bubble popping because there are dangers that are so hidden from you and you can't see it, but it will impact you. So let's just dive right in. First, I wanna talk about household debt because what we're hearing is that, oh my goodness, it's the consumer. The consumer is so much stronger than anybody thought that they would be. Well, are they really? Because in order to maintain a reasonable or some standard of living, what are they doing? They're taking on a ton of debt. In fact, household debt reaches 17.5 trillion in the fourth quarter of 2023. As all of this debt rises, which is why they're saying such a strong consumer, guess what's also happening? delinquencies are rising. Transition into serious delinquencies, so this is 90 plus days by loan type. Oh, okay, well student loans are doing okay because after all, they were given some level of forgiveness. But credit card debt, that delinquency is spiking. Auto loan, mortgages are still kind of staying relatively. That's up actually, because look at it, it's right here, that's up and revolving credit is kind of flat. So everything is up except for student loans, which they were given forbearance and then forgiveness, and revolving credit. That's not a very good sign. The delinquency transition rate increased for all debt types except for student loans. Yikes, seriously, yikes more defaults for senior living ahead as debt comes due. Well, what do we know about what's happening in the senior community? There are more of us growing old and requiring that level of care, and they are not getting it, especially if those facilities are in default. There will be fewer and fewer of them. So let's take a look at those senior living defaults. Financial distress soared during the pandemic. And guess what? Is that over yet? No, it is not. It is still afflicting the sector. So these are the payment defaults where they just didn't make the payment. And these are technical because they were late. And you can see since 2020, since the pandemic, still really high. We haven't recouped from the global uh, markets shutting down and business is shutting down. Nearly 8% of the 43.2 billion in senior living municipal debt is currently in default. Uh-oh, what do you think is going to happen if there are not enough senior living facilities to accommodate all of us old people? Are you gonna take your grandmother in? I hope so, you should. There are many countries where we don't have these issues, but in the US, that's not one of them. That's not one of them. So we're gonna to have to deal with this issue. You think they can keep kicking it down the road? Because look, this is just the beginning of 2024, okay? This is not, this is growing at a rapid pace. It's worse than it was in 2017. What's it gonna be by the end of the year? I don't know. Plus we have commercial real estate. That's CRE is commercial real estate values yet to trial, right? That means yet to bottom. So let's look at commercial real estate because everybody knows there's a problem there. Though a lot of, of entities in the total real estate market are not yet willing to realize that in order to liquidate, they're gonna have to take less and less. So let's look at crisis versus how long it takes for the prices to recover. And the best example of that that we should be looking at is the great financial crisis, which started well before, but became apparent to the public in 2008. And you can see this is months to recovery, and it took 18 months of downward price action and 
it went down a whole lot faster than it's gone up. And it's taken an awful lot of inflation to make those prices rise. Because what did the central bankers say? They targeted real estate for reflation. Okay, this is where the pandemic is. It hasn't hit bottom, bottom yet. It hasn't even nearly hit bottom yet. Thanks to all of the money for free printing that the central banks have made the choice to do. It's ridiculous. The secular shift, so this is a huge shift. When you see secular, the shift to hybrid and remote working and challenging refinancing conditions, which means the interest rates up a whole lot more than when they were held at zero, right? ZERP, zero interest rate policy. Uh, let's see, the secular shift to hybrid and remote working and challenging refinancing conditions will drive the slower, more elongated recovery timeline for office and lead to permanent property valuation impairments and higher CMBS, commercial mortgage-backed security loan losses. The CMBS is the product that Wall Street takes from all of these commercial, the CRE, the commercial real estate loans, packages them up and then sells them to you. And you don't even realize that this is happening. But the permanent property valuation impairments and higher CMBS loan losses relative to expectation at issuance. And what all that garbage means is they sold it to you here. I'm gonna use my chopstick. Remember, when debt is issued, so the CREs as well as the CMBSs, they are issued at par, right? These are interest rates. This is the market value. What happens is as interest rates were going down, right? the market value of these instruments was going up, hiding what was really happening underneath. Now, the interest rates were going up, and that means the market value of all of this garbage is going down. And so what they're saying here, relative expectation at issue, they issue it at par. They're underwater. And the fact that you can't see it in the banking sector is irrelevant, I gotta tell you. It's irrelevant because it went up because of all of the money, the free money, the inflated money. All of this inflated the whole system. And that's changing now because we're at the end of the currency's life cycle. The uptick in US CMB, CMBS delinquencies driven by mixed use and office defaults just in February alone. All delinquency rates were up. These are all different things for Freddie Mac, single asset bar. It doesn't really matter. Single family rental, large loan, small business, commercial real estate, CLOs, collateralized debt obligations. And I've done videos in the past how CLOs, collateralized debt obligations, replaced what popped back in 2008. C DOs, which were collateralized debt obligations, right? That market dried up in bam, 24 hours. And I am not exaggerating. Is that what's going to happen here? Probably so. And if you're in the system when that's happening, you ain't getting out, period. So let's take a look at what that looks like in a chart because we know I love my graphs and they really tell the whole story. These are the words, but what do you think about that spike in delinquencies on multifamily serious delinquency rates, 90 plus days or in foreclosure? It's happening. The debt bubble has popped, period. We don't even have to talk about it. You're seeing the data. You think it's different? Okay, you're entitled to your opinion, but that's the data. I believe the data, it's way smarter than I am. And I won't deny it because that's something that I want or I wish for, I have hopium. Stop living on hopium, begin to live in reality, get protected, get out of the system while you can. When asked Ernest Hemingway, they said, how, do you, how did you go bankrupt? And he said, slowly at first, 
then fast. And that's the way it happens. People think they can always kick the can down the road, kick the can down the road, kick the can down. Well, they can do it until they can't. Are we getting to a point where they can't? Because quite honestly, that's what I think. 